Do you want your art to be good enough to sell? It can be overwhelming to even know how to start and hard to know if you're ready. So in this episode of The Josie Show, I have three practical things for you to do right now if you want your art to be irresistible to your collectors. Hello, welcome to this episode of The Josie Show, where I talk artist to artist about art making and art selling, and where I strongly believe that artists should get paid. I've been selling my own art since I was a teenager, and for the last few years, I've had a full-time art business with yearly sales and the multiple six figures. So I've learned a few things. The number one thing you need to do to sell your art is surprisingly simple. If you want to sell art, you need to make art. <laughs> I know, you're amazed, you're shocked, but you'd be surprised at how many artists struggle to actually create the art in the quantity needed. It's a real sticking point for people. The creative process is far more alive when it's responsive rather than cerebral. True story, I was talking to an artist who wanted to sell her work and I was asking her what her work was like and she said, well, I've only made a few paintings, but what I really wanna know is what kind of insurance should I get? <laughs> It's like, well, that's kind of the cart before the horse, right? It's the process of making, getting your hands dirty, having some failures, wasting some paint. That's the only way to move forward. It's so easy for art makers to just get stuck in their brains. As Marie Forleo says, action creates clarity. Action creates and defines your unique artist voice. In the beginning, most of your art won't sell, but you'll be on your way to creating irresistible brilliance. And my friend, this is the fun part. If you don't love the process of making art, you are barking up the wrong tree. You gotta love it. Find your flow and bliss yourself out in the process. The number two tip to make art that is good enough to sell is to niche down. In the beginning, you'll be everywhere. You'll try everything. This is right and good. However, as you mature as an artist, you need to niche down and create a collection or a series. A collection is going to be 10 to 20 works that all have a similar theme. If they were all together in a room, a stranger will be able to tell that one person made them. Your mom will be able to describe what you do to her friend. This is so important. And so many artists lack this vital discipline. Remember, a niche is not a jail sentence. You can always, you can always change what you do in the future, but do yourself the favor of following an idea deeply and truly. If you exhaust it and it's not fun anymore, try something else. But you will need to have some themes developed in order to get an audience to know, like, and trust you and your work. You start off as a stranger, and if you are coming in heavy with something different every day on social, your audience or your potential audience will find this very dislocating and difficult to connect with. By working in a series, we are telling a story that our collectors love to see. Number three, the next step to make art that is good enough to sell is to regularly publish your work and listen to your audience. You may have heard of a little thing called social media. Your private art practice is all about you, but developing consistent art sales requires a bit of give and take with your audience. There are lots of ways to listen to your audience. In real life, you can have an open studio or have trusted friends over to discuss your art. In social media, you can use it as a discussion and feedback tool. This happens over time and over time themes and trends will emerge in people's responses, even with a very small audience. Listen, adapt. I try a lot of different things and variations on themes. I share them to social media. Some of the things I do make my audience bored. I don't know why. Some of the things I do captures people's enthusiasm in a way that absolutely surprises me. I don't know why, but I listen because I want to sell my art. For whatever reason, I could never get anyone to buy my original watercolors. People just didn't care. I didn't take it personally. 
I still make the watercolors because I personally like them, but I stopped trying to sell them. By the way, I have a free training called Five Pillars of Online Art Sales that unpacks some of these details about where and how you can share your art. Check the caption or my website to get it. To sum up, to make art that's good enough to sell, you've got to make art. <laughs> Start now. Take action on your crazy ideas. When you have a few interesting concepts, pick one and drill down. Make a series of work. I'm telling you, this works. It will make you a far better artist and it will make it much easier to sell your work. This will go a long way in making you more discoverable on social media. Number three, communicate, get feedback, and don't take it personally. When you have developed your voice by creating an art habit, made a series of works and published them and corresponded with your audience over time, I guarantee you will start to sell your art. Where are you on this journey? Have you developed any series or collections yet? Why or why not? Put your comments below and I'll see you next time. It will go a long way to making you more discoverable on social media. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Ryan. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Ah, holy buckets. Listen, you mangy mutt. Ha, 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 ha.